almost uh, zero. So actually, Japanese economy is not experiencing deflation, but at least Japan's economy is not experiencing inflation. Uh, given that environment, uh, uh, the, the introduction of rent and mark uh, doesn't, is not a, a pressing issue for <laughs> Japanese uh, <coughs> economy. But uh, the, I understand uh, your point. And the, if I interpret your question uh, uh, slightly differently, uh, what is a, what is a way for changing mindset of uh, uh, people? And this is uh, the pertinent uh, question. And this leads me to the, uh, the, s <laughs> the third question. Uh, what is the effective policy tool to cope with uh, uh, deflation? Uh, the typical answer or the typical answer which was uh, uh, given uh, up until recently was just to print money. But uh, we have already experimented with this. The, we have expan expanded uh, our balance sheet enormously. But still, the, we cannot uh, witness the increase in inflation rate. And uh, there are two reasons why deflation has proceeded. One is the decline in wage rate, which I explained in my presentation. The flexible adjustment of normal wage was both good and bad. It was good in the sense that we can maintain the employment. We avoided massive unemployment. This was positive. But at the same time, decline in wage rate was translated into lower prices of services, which are labor intensive. Both are the two faces of the same coin. But anyway, this is one reason why Japan experienced deflation. The second and more fundamental reason is that Japan's uh, growth rate, Japan's potential growth rate is uh, trending down. Given that people can expect that their future income will increase in a steady manner. Therefore, people spend less. And this is translated into deflation. So the, what is needed is the effort, every effort to raise potential growth rate. This is a difficult question. But uh, uh, I'm always pointing to two factors, two measures. One is to increase effective labor supply uh, by increasing the labor participation rate, especially by the female and the elderly. The second is to increase uh, productivity. The connotation of productivity or connotation of in increasing productivity is rather technological one. But uh, the, when we look at uh, productivity in a society or the economy, what is crucially important is to maintain the economic metabolism, to, to shift resources from the less, the, sh the, the shift from resources from, from, from the area where demand is not increasing to the area where demand is increasing. And this is crucially important to raise productivity uh, uh, in a society. So there's no magic solution. And we have to make every effort to raise uh, potential growth rate. And eventually, people uh, start to recognize that growth rate, potential growth rate is gradually increasing. Then people spend more, which is translated into uh, a bit higher inflation rate. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman on the end there. Hello, Andrew Milligan's my name. Can I just pick up your last point about whether or not central banks can create inflation? You're absolutely right that, of course, the quantitative easing that we've seen in the Bank of Japan and here in the UK and the US as well has been the buying of financial assets. But surely central banks can create inflation through actually money supply growth, through, in effect, providing vouchers to every single consumer in the country uh, to go out and spend by a set date. 
So there's a social or political decision to be taken about whether or not an economy wishes to create inflation. But surely a central bank can create inflation through credit expansion rather than quantitative easing buying a certain degree of financial assets from a certain part of uh, the financial sector. Thank you. Um, the gentleman at the front row here. Good evening, Governor. Uh, my name is Timothy. Uh, you pointed out that the second part of the Japan lost, lost decade is because of the aging population. And if the aggressive monetary policy is, has worked so well, then does that justify the aggressive monetary policy that is being pursued by central bankers all, all around the world? Uh, would that mean that uh, f the finance sector should be given a special status because of its um, systemic importance to the whole economy, uh, such as uh, by giving them a label too big to fail status, uh, is it really justified? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> gentleman in the front row here. <clears throat> oh, Toby Chambers, We Care Foundation. Uh, you mentioned that um, central bankers around the world now have probably reached the limit. Is that an admission that the central banks are actually out of bullets and we can't really solve this problem? Good. <coughs> uh, I got a three question, uh, which are more or less the same. So uh, I'd like to answer all these questions uh, 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 simultaneously. The first of all, the what is the most crucial role that central bank could play? The, I think the most uh, crucial role played by central bank is to maintain financial system stability. The Japan was faced with deflation. But uh, unlike U.S. in 1930s, Japan did not experience the, the contraction of economic activity. And uh, the very reason why Japan avoided the, the, the severe contraction of economic, economic activity is we maintained the financial system stability. And, and this is, the people often talk about monetary policy in narrow sense. Of course, monetary policy is uh, important, but what is more important is to maintain the stability of financial system. The, I, am, the, I was a student at the University of Chicago many years ago, and I took uh, Friedman's last class. Uh, he said two things about role of monetary policy. One is to prevent the money from being the source of instability of uh, the economy. Money performs very useful function, but at the same time, money sometimes uh, becomes a source of instability. Uh, in order to avoid that kind of situation, central bank acts as a land of last resort in an aggressive manner. And uh, this, remain, this remains uh, true uh, even uh, today. As for narrowly defined monetary policy, the, the distinction between monetary policy and fiscal policy becomes uh, somewhat blurred. That is your uh, point of question. Uh, there is no clear-cut answer that question. Uh, what Bank of Japan did was uh, to engage in some, engage in monetary policy with some element of quasi-fiscal policy. Uh, for instance, we bought uh, the stocks held by financial uh, institution because uh, Japanese financial institution held sizable amount of stocks the one stock price decline, then this uh, the affects 
the behavior of financial institution in an adversary manner, which in turn affects economic activity. Therefore, we decided on purchasing stocks held by financial institution. And also, uh, we are now purchasing the, the exchange, tra exchange trust fund, real estate trust, etc. This is uh, an orthodox measure. And this is somewhat, uh, the, the, we are somewhat entering into the area uh, uh, affecting the allocation and the, at micro level. When we conduct that kind of monetary policy, uh, we have to be accountable to the general public. So before starting this operation, uh, we, Bank of Japan, uh, described the general principle for doing this kind of policy measures. But again, there is no clear-cut answer. And uh, but essentially, what we are doing is buying time. So in the meantime, the government or society have to tackle is the very essence of the uh, program. The we are uh, the we as a central bank and bankers uh, have to think about uh, what central bank should do in difficult uh, times. Uh, that is uh, my answer to the question uh, whether uh, central bank doesn't have <laughs> any bread or not. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor. I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop it there. We, we have uh, an excess supply of um, questions, and I think that is in large measure, Governor, a tribute to you. Um, we've seen a very thoughtful and wise and experienced and analytical discussion, and I think we've seen just how valuable it is to be able to discuss deeply difficult and serious issues in a quiet and thoughtful way in an academic and non-confrontational environment. That's how we learn and that's how we deepen our understanding of things. And you uh, set the tone for that and you set the substance and the style and the, the deep wisdom that you brought to the table today. And uh, this, I think, is a, a, a very valuable tradition amongst policymakers and central bankers to share the difficulties they face, to share the challenges, and to share the analysis and the comparisons between different circumstances in the way that you did. It was greatly valuable to us. It was a great privilege to the LSE that you chose to come here to have this discussion. And uh, we're very proud that you did and very grateful that you did. And thank you very much indeed, Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much.